What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle tw question 26 in the Math 3 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us to find the length of the radius of the circle represented by this equation. Now, in order to do a question like this, you'll need to know the coordinate equation of the circle, and the way that we're going to get from this to this is by a process called completing the square. So let's first talk about what all this means. This is the formula for a circle as we would write it in the coordinate plane. Essentially, it's x minus the x-coordinate of our circle's center, all squared, plus y minus the y-coordinate of our circle's center, all squared, equals the radius squared. Uh, very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. But anyway, our circle is at the point made by whatever we're subtracting from x is our x-coordinate, and whatever we're subtracting from y, that's our y-coordinate. And then um, we'll have a number here on the end, which is the square of our radius. Now, since we're trying to find the radius, as we go through all this, we're going to be most interested in this number that's going to be by itself on the equal sign. But we are going to have to use some pretty tricky math stuff in order to get to a place where we know this. All right, so I'm going to start, actually, by rewriting this, not changing anything, just the order that I'm writing stuff in. And I'm going to call it, let's use blue and purple for this x squared minus 4x, and I'll leave some space, plus y squared minus 4y, and I'll leave some space. And I'll also go ahead and take this plus 4 and move it to the other side of the equation for the sake of space, equals negative 4. And we don't need all this anymore. We're just interested in this negative 4. Okay, so now when I say completing the square, what I mean is that we are going to actually look at my x squared minus 4x and something and add a number here that turns this into something that we can change into an x minus h looking thing. We're going to add a number to this y expression so that we can turn this into a y minus k squared looking thing. Um, and then we are going to have to um, add or do the same thing to both sides. So essentially, let's go over how exactly we're going to complete the square on this. Um, basically, a perfect square trinomial looks like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And the idea is we find a, we use a to find b, and then we square b to get what's going to go here. So to find a, that seems pretty easy. a is just x. Now for the 2ab part, that tells me that negative 4x equals 2bx. And this tells me, let's see. So if we cross out x from both sides, I know that 2b equals negative 4. And if I treat this like an equation and divide both sides by 2, my b number equals negative 2. And now I take that negative 2 and square it. And it's going to go in here to complete the square. So this will be x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I'm going to do the same thing with y's, and this looks very similar, so I'm just going to walk through the process one more time. This whole thing has to look like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I see that a squared is right under y squared, so I know that y equals a in this case. And I know that negative 4y equals 2b times y, because a was y. I can sub that in. I cross out my y from both sides. I get that 2b equals negative 4, and once again, b equals negative 2. I plug negative 2 in for b squared to get positive 4, so this is plus 4. Now, at this point, I need to look back and make sure I've kept track of what I've added to the left side of my equation, so my plus 4 and my plus 4. Because I need, if I add something to the left side, to do the same thing to the right side. Plus 4, plus 4. So negative 4, plus 4, plus 4 is just going to give me 4. And I'm going to write that over here. Because now I'm going to take this and turn it into x minus 2 all squared. I'm going to take this stuff and turn it into y minus 2 all squared. I know that this equals 4. And at this point, I only need to do one more math thing, 
and that's to remind myself that this number here on the end is r squared. So if I know that 4 equals some number r squared, all I have to do is take the square root of 4 to get my answer, which is 2 units. So my answer is a. Now there is a trick answer here, or actually they're all trick answers, because if you had forgotten about the squared part, you would have answered b. If you had thought that you were supposed to double 4, you would have gotten c. And if you got your square and square root mixed up and decided to just square 4, you would have gotten d. So any of these are trick answers that you could have gotten very easily, even if you had done everything else in the problem right. The people who make these questions are kind of cruel like that, but our answer is A, the radius is 2 units.